Hey, it's Jill with Crick Flix. Um, for those of you that may not even remember me because it's been so incredibly long since I've done a video, a um, lot of requests, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, the reason I haven't been isn't because I'm no longer doing it, it's because I've had so many issues going on with my family, um, uh, just grandkids and sports and, and me caring for them out of school and issues with my husband. Um, my husband, oh, a couple months ago, um, was making one of his tables and cut the ends of three fingers off on the table saw. So we spent a while dealing with that. Uh, wasn't a month later or a few weeks later, he, he was under a study for um, sleep apnea, but hadn't gotten his CPAP machine yet. And he was falling asleep standing up. He was falling asleep watering flowers. He was falling asleep constantly. And he was taking my granddaughter home after he had not slept an entire evening. And in doing so, he rear-ended my daughter's mother-in-law's brand new car in the driveway. He fell asleep as he's pulling in the driveway. So he has not been driving. He's starting to drive now. We've got him on a CPAP machine and Things are looking better, um, and he's getting to drive a little bit now. However, short distances and no kids in the car until we know that he's not having these episodes of falling asleep. It is on, it, He's getting a lot better. But anyway, nothing serious going on. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's happy. We just are extremely, extremely busy. So what I'm going to do today, for those of you that have been asking about the scrapbooking, um, I keep threatening that I'm going to be doing it. However, right now, business is very slow because I haven't been doing anything uh, for at least five months. I've been doing very little or nothing um, to promote, to, I mean, um, I'm slow right now. And now school has started and kind of getting back into a routine. I'm hoping that I can move forward and start doing what I was doing. But... What I am going to show you, I have done a lot of the past orders with a lot different techniques to them. Right now, what I'm working on is this is local, because if it wasn't local, I would not be doing them. Shipping on them would be absolutely astronomical. And so I'm not even going to have them on my, um, uh, my Etsy shop because they would be very expensive. And shipping would be outrageous. Uh, but I'm making Noah's Ark. And I'm making the animals. And they are all three and four feet. So what I'm going to show you. Because you're going to want to know how I did this. Um, one thing I will tell you. So I don't lose track of where I'm at. I did end up cutting them all out by hand. On my software I cut everything out. Um section in it because I had to go in and cut it to make sure it wasn't wider than 12 inches and longer than 18 inches. So to take these images and dissect them so that each piece that you cut out fits on the mat to print and cut is very challenging. What I ended up doing on the elephant and the reason I'm going to videotape this one and not the others because the others were safe. They all came out fine. There was there was no issues. Um, I will take a picture of all of them. Um, when they're done, I'm hoping to have eight. This is the sixth one. But I'm hoping, again, that I'll have eight when I'm done. Um, but I decided to show this one because this is the one that was that cost me the most to do. What I did is I cut the ears off. I cut the trunk off. I cut two sets of legs out. And, and the head. The head, I'd already pulled it to its size. I had all of this printed. The last thing I did was the head, which was my mistake. And the head was too wide for the mat. I didn't want to have a seam right in the middle of his head, which had I to do it all over again. I may have chosen that route because it might have been easier. But anyway, I didn't. Um, and so when I pushed the head together, the cutout of the ears didn't fit right. Um, so, and rather than starting all over again, I use a combination of uh, markers that are Master's Touch. 
they come in little kits of they're really nice anyway i'm gonna get them at um michael's and um i used a bluish gray tint and i used a tan and mixed the two and what i did with those is i colored in these voids where i put the ear i was going to overlap the ear into the head but then it because of the shape of the ear it covered up the head and so i the only other route i had to go was to uh color it in which i did um, with marker and what I'm going to end up doing is when I in, when I do the embellishing um, with my liquid pearls I will bring that all together I did I did shade this in with distress ink by Tim Holtz yep it is Tim Holtz and I have these wonderful little tips here that you can get I got these um Amazon, I believe. They're little sponge tips. Um, when you're doing a lot of inking, depending on your technique, they have these little squares with Velcro on them that you can put your little pad on for inking. And they also have, which I have all the colors, of these distressed crayons, which are the same thing. They're ink, but when you color it in, you rub them in with your, your blending tool, and they are like, they're same technique as an ink, or shows up the same as, as an ink. What I'm going to do on this one is I already did this ear, but I'm going to show you on the second one. And you might not be able to see this real good. I try to open up a little bit of space here. Okay, I'm going to get a little closer here so you can see. Um, right in here, I already colored in with the marker. It's just this stripe. But again, when I get all this space in, in, enhanced with my... Um, I'm going to be using, not glitter, I'm going to be using liquid pearls, um, only because this is, this is for a boy, and uh, I wanted to make it, um, I didn't want all the glitter, that, that to me, he's a little bit older, I shouldn't say he's old, but he's a little bit older than, he's not a little, little girl with princesses and whatever, he's, I was actually kind of, surprised um, at the theme he picked because uh, he's typically sports um, always picks baseball and whatever but for some reason this year he wanted Noah's Ark and he's got a wonderful mother that whatever he wants and chooses for his theme she will do her best to make it happen I've been doing her boys she's got two sons and they split play sports with my grandkids and I've been doing their birthday um, decorations for, for a while now. And they kind of count on my work when they come down in the morning. She decorates everything downstairs. So when they come down in the morning, their birthday, they're, it's all decorated in, in their honor. Um, I'm, I, I ink that with black because that was the color around the ear. So I brought the, the black and the ink is really nice to use because it it can give you that shaded like you already have um on the, the printout these images were amazing i did get them on etsy if you just type in safari you can get them because they don't have to be three feet you can make them any size you want but the file itself was is great uh, Okay, that hit a little bit on there. Now, there's a little bit in here that went missed. I'm not going to color that in. What I didn't realize is sometimes I shrink just a piece, but depending on how I shrink it up on the page is determined on how, what the cut is, how, how the image is cut out. In this particular case, um, I didn't do it right because... Since everything was all cut out and all of it was connected somewhere between the trunk, the legs, the ears, everything uh, was affected by just shrinking the head. So the trunk didn't fit properly. The legs had to change those around, had to change the ears. And so this has been a little bit of a challenge. And the next time I do one, I save the file, but I will not do do it this way. I, will, I won't. It, this has been... Of all of them this has been not fun but what I did for this here part 
I cut out a little piece of the part that I had cut off when I shrunk it. And I'm just going to put it in there like that. Um, I know that you might be thinking it's really going to show and stick out. But if you know how to use liquid pearls and glitters, because in certain cases it might be glitter, um, embellishments, whatever it is that you're going to use, if you really know how to do it, you, will, you can't even find seams. My husband was looking at the ones that I had done, and he's like, how, how did you print these? How did you do these? Because he could see nothing from from what I had done. And I just put this in that part up over. Um, but it was just the way that I covered the seams. And I, and I didn't, I ended up not cutting along the lines curvy, except for like the ears. I just made them straight. I took the image and made it as large as I wanted. And then I just, I diced it and all straight lines. Um, this is one of the reasons I don't like to do these larger pieces is they, they're not easy. They're, they're really, really not nowhere near being easy. Now, there we've got the elephant and he is huge. And you're gonna ask, how does he stand up and not tip over? Another trick. I had to go to a heavier wood, um, not popsicle sticks. Um, they have to be used uh, kind of the, like kind of like a guard stick that my husband got me at Menards, and it works fabulous for the bigger pieces. They don't tip over. They don't. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. So that is what I would use. I'm going to try it on my two foot pieces too. Um, just kind of a word of advice that wood is quite a bit thicker than a depressor stick. We get these at well, um, Menards. But this, this wood is substantially thicker. I don't know if you can see. This is a quarter inch thick. Um, however, it works awesome for the larger pieces, but only on the really large pieces. Because one thing you cannot have that thick of wood on a 15 inch centerpiece, because most likely you will not have the space that you need to close the edges so that you can't see in and see the wood that's in the middle. So what I do with these is I run them through the center and, and then across, and then I fill it in with the other sticks. That way you can't, I, I'm able to seal them shut. Um, there, I use my, my glossy accents to fill his eyes which is something everybody always loves, the glossy accents. Now, I am going to be using, uh, not glitter, this is for my other piece, I better not lose that, but I'm going to be using the liquid pearls. And these, again, I believe are by Ranger. Let me bring them over here. So I'm going to be using a uh, gray, a black, a charcoal gray. Um, I'm going to be using a lighter color on the ears here, on the inside of the ears. I don't know what color it is because unfortunately, did they put it anywhere? Um, I don't know where they put the color on these. These, li these liquid pearls aren't like my... Uh, like my Oh, I can't even think of what it's like. Not like something. Um, my glitter glues. And I wasn't using them for a long time. I didn't really like them. But since I've learned to like them, I've learned to love them. I can get really precise. And especially on a little bit more... There's some images that I just, I'm not really in love with the glitters on them. So I've been using a mixture of the two. On these particular ones, I'm not. I'm using strictly the liquid pearls. And right now, all I'm doing is outlining the trunk lines. 
Now they're starting to get darker, so I'm going to go to the darker gray. And now this is probably going to, you guys are going to be lucky on this one because I have so much to tell on these and, of course, stories to tell um, that I'm probably going to be doing these in various videos. Um, again, I've already got, I think, five done, but I have to do the, the embellishments on them yet. Uh, which means this and so um, I don't think I don't know if I'm going to film that or not we'll see we'll see I'm just trying to get myself back out there again no more vacation I've had just it's been a lot um, Mila is now in now in pre-k or in 4k or whatever it's called so that has made life easier for me um my son's kids that I take care of, Ellie and PJ, are now one and three, and they are getting easier. However, now my son and daughter-in-law are trying for number three. Um, they want three, and my other one, other son that has three is looking for number four. And then I think they're done. We had our family portraits done a few weeks ago and getting together our troop of 23 people. We're actually 24, but my granddaughter, my oldest one, Kennedy, has moved, not moved, she's going to school at Tampa Bay. So she is in Florida away at college and loving it. Unfortunately, she wasn't here when we did the family photos, but I asked the photographer, had she been any good, she could have photoshopped her in there. Uh, that was that was my request. I don't know if anybody took me serious, but I feel bad because all the pictures came out and I had posted them and, and Kennedy's not in them. But that's just part of growing up. You know, they go away to school and it's so hard for us to get us all together as it is that... Um, worrying about whoo, trying to schedule it when she's home during the holidays is for an outdoor photo shoot is not very practical okay clutzing around here now now you'll notice <laughs> i don't think anybody's going to jump off this video and go oh my gosh i'm going to go do a a uh, four foot elephant they are hard, extremely hard. I'm not kidding when I say they are very hard. And what makes them hard, so hard, is having the space to put the piece down to do what you gotta do to it. Because my table is only about a foot and a half wide. And these things, he's three feet wide. Um, the reason I'm using this table is because um, for filming, and I like to be able to get around the whole thing to do what I've got to do. I'm going to use some light gray in here. Um, no, I think I was going to do shading in here. I think I'm going to do some shading above the eyes. I'm going to use my little fingertip with some distress. I don't want everything solid I, I, because these are kind of a watercolor technique on these prints. Um, we did not want them whimsical again. Um, the little boy is not a little boy. I mean, is he, he, he's young, but he's not. I didn't want it baby looking because he's not a baby. And I probably should have waited that for that to dry because now I mucked it up. And clean up a little bit. Um, grandkids are all doing great. Uh, all very, very busy right now. Um, Kendall is now in high school and loving it. She just had homecoming last week and she played on the powder puff game uh, in her team one. 
she's a freshman and they won against the seniors. So she was pretty hyped. Uh, she's absolutely loving high school. She's got a boyfriend, um, but uh, very, very involved in everything, which is nice. It keeps her very busy. She's playing basketball still, <laughs> loves basketball, and she, I, I, I'm not sure when that even starts. I think it might be next week, but um, things are going great. And I'm trying to think what else. I mean, it's been so long, I can't remember what I may have told or not told. Gray, we're gonna do gray. I'm not gonna do the whole head at once because I don't have anywhere to move it to dry as I go. So what I'm gonna do on the next one is I'm gonna put it together on the flip side and show you how I piece together this completely hacked up elephant. He is just cut in, I think there might be six or eight pieces to him. I'm not even sure. I already started taping some of them together. If they weren't so expensive to ship, I would put them on my shop, but I'm not going to negotiate on shipping. I did a shipment the other day and it was rather than 18 inch pieces, it was two foot without a uh, base on it. So they were bigger and the shipping on it, it would normally be like $19, went up to 55. So I let her know this, if you're gonna order pieces that are an actual two feet tall, not using a box is part of your two feet to give you a six inch uh, boost with the with the box. I decorate the box to match the theme. Um, if you don't do that and you want the whole thing two feet, shipping is, again, non-negotiable. It's very expensive and I can't take the hit for it unless I were to up my prices by triple. I mean, the shipping cost me nearly as much as the order. And I'm not gonna do that again. This is trial and error and part of doing business. I learned, learned the hard way by shipping them and having charged the same price that I normally would. My husband always loves to come home and say, uh, do you know what that costs to ship? And I don't have the heart to tell them uh, no, and I really don't want you to tell me. But it is very, very costly. And not only is it costly, post office has gotten, their service has gotten absolutely atrocious. Um, I, have to, I always have to make sure everything. Now the white line that you see around here, I can't decide what to do with it. This was because I didn't know this part of the ear was not going to be an outline. I, didn't, I wasn't thinking that these two were going to be um, fused together. And so I left my white offset on there. Uh, when I'm all done, I will make a decision whether or not I'm going to go in there and cut that white off, lift the ear up a little bit and cut, cut it off or something. Probably can't. No, I can't cut it off because I've already got them attached. I'll have to go in there with some of my liquid pearls. I didn't think, liquid pearls always reminded me of puff paint, but ever since I started using them, I've grown to be very, very fond of them for a lot of different reasons. Okay. I'm gonna quit on him before I forget what I did and bump it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I pieced him together. Where am I gonna put this boy? Okay, I gotta get him out of here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have got somewhere in here that I'm gonna set him down, um, take a breather, and I'll be right back. I know you got nothing but silence. Sorry about that, but I didn't plan ahead of time where I was going to put him. So let's get this one and put him together. And actually, I don't know how well this is going to work because okay, I've already got this one's ears on. His ears, 
but you can see the cuts back here. Here's one, here's two, three. This, the head alone has got three cuts in it. And I did not ink this one yet. Did I? I don't know. Yeah, I did. I did ink this one already. And let me see how I did this. I've got to do the trunk. And when I cut them out, oh, what I said, maybe I said it already, and if I didn't, I'll tell you now, I did cut these all out by hand. Um, it was the only way that I didn't have have to use the registration marks because when you use the registration marks you lose a uh, I would say a good inch all the way around on your pieces so I decided not to go that route that I was going to cut them out by hand pieces that are this large it really wasn't that hard I would never cut out by hand uh, I don't know what images I can think of the top of my head the big ones are really easy and actually it was even quicker to, the whole process was quicker um, printing and everything because I didn't have to worry about cutting one out on the mat before I put another one out to print didn't matter because I was cutting them all out by hand so it turned out to be a much better way for me to do it okay there we got his trunk Thanks. His trunk. And then I have the legs. The legs are next. I always cut the, the, the white piece to connect them on, on it. Shouldn't say always. Sometimes I use strips of white to connect them. It all depends. It's a whole lot easier doing different ways of connecting the chopped up pieces on um, how, how large your piece is. And this piece was definitely large enough that, and because I cut it out by hand, I was it was very easy for me to leave the white to attach to the piece. Now, I have this piece in here that I found on the last one I don't need, so I'm gonna cut it out. All of this that you're seeing me having to correct right now, all of this happened simply because I, um, I pushed the head in. I tried to make the head more narrow so it would fit on the mat. And it was only maybe a fourth of an inch. That's all it took. It's all it took. So next time, what I would do is take the entire elephant and um, push it, push it in so it was in a fourth of an inch less, so it would fit on my mat before we cut it out. Um, because it, it really made it hard for me to put this one together. But I have a four foot lion already done, a three foot leopard. Um, a three foot giraffe and a three foot zebra. Um, they all look completely different in size because I didn't take that into account when I was cutting them out. But hindsight tells me this piece fits and the other one didn't. That is strange. Hope they match up when I go to put them together because this does not match up. Or this matches up and doesn't need that other piece. I don't know what it did. Oh, probably when I flipped it on the mat, it probably landed differently. The other side was off. But um, those are the ones I have done so far. I didn't take into consideration when I made the giraffe. I wanted to make them all pretty uniform. The problem was, is that the giraffe, when I made it two, three feet tall, two feet over his, his neck, and he's really thin, so when he's three feet tall, he doesn't look as big because he's thin. Because his neck took up the majority of the height. Then you take an elephant and make him three feet tall. So he's the same height, but four times as wide. So what I told her we're going to have to do when we set up for Noah's Ark, because she's got a backdrop, backdrop of the arch, is we're going to have to take the giraffe and have it coming out of the ark first. 
and then the, the smaller the giraffe I do believe is a little smaller and then as they get larger we have to have them coming out of the arc so the largest ones the very first one that you see um, I first got to see how her setup is but uh, you know it's a birthday party they're centerpieces they're they're not um, actual size it, and I don't think anybody would have noticed or thought anything of it but me is I'm my worst critic and sometimes I present myself problems where I don't need to because I mentioned something would have never crossed anybody's mind so I've already let the cat out of the bag on that one but anyway there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in his eyes but I'm not going to do all the rest of the the work on it um, you kind of get the gist of it I'm not going to try and assemble it uh, front and back on film because I have to do it on the floor because they're so big I don't have a table not even my work tables are big enough um, so I'm not even going to attempt it it's it's just oh another thing I'm doing is my changing subjects uh, my niece is getting married next September the one that was living here she just moved back to Colorado couple weeks ago um, he's a pilot and he got a job back where they're from which is nice because they're getting married and that's where their families are so she's going to law school and she's going to try and apply to come back to Madison if she can get in law school here they'll be back um, if they're planning on having kids soon I don't want her to to come back I want her to stay where her mother is because I, I just find that a time of your life, um, whether it's agreed with me or not, everybody has its opinions. There's no, no right or wrong. But my opinion is, uh, I don't know how I would have felt when my daughters had their babies had I not been here, nor my sons. Um, I watch my sister-in-law deal with life after the loss of my brother and one of her her son she's only got two kids and her son lives in Norway and won't be moving back and her daughter is now in a relationship and kind of spends most of her time with him what they call each other pre fiance never heard of that but you know, one step at a time, this would be her third marriage, so I'm hoping she doesn't just jump into it. Uh, but anyway, she, my sister-in-law, has lived in Janesville all of her entire life, and after my brother passed away, she decided to move up to Minneapolis. It's about four hours away to be with her daughter and by her grandsons, because her granddaughters are in Norway. Well, now that her daughter is in a relationship, she doesn't see her much. And she's very, very lonely. My sister-in-law was down last week, and she's very lonely, very, very lonely, and has not come to grips with the, the death of my brother, which I haven't either. He's an absolutely amazing, amazing man. Loved him with all my heart. Um, and the way that he died so sudden and unexpected that it's just no preparation like you know being sick and you're, you're praying that they can get peace now he died arriving at cancun mexico with his wife to celebrate their wedding anniversary her birthday and valentine's day all wrapped into one and he'd just gone to the doctor and the doctor said you need to see a cardiologist because he was having issues. And they did tests and said, you need to go to a cardiologist. And my brother asked, well, is it okay if I wait and go after I get back from vacation? I may have told this story years ago. It's been so long since I, I've filmed. Um, and apparently the, the doctor said, yeah, but as soon as you get back, get in. Well, unfortunately, he left for Mexico the next day and died that night, um, three o'clock in the morning. 
woke up and told my woke my sister-in-law up and said, call an ambulance. And by the time she got out of the bathroom, she called an ambulance and went to the bathroom and came out and he was gone. So very, 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 very sad. And she's not gotten over it. So um, I've been dealing with that too. Like I said, she was just up here and, and it's so hard because there are no easy answers to that. Very, very hard. Very, very hard. But for those of you, and the reason, because I know there's going to be some people out there that have never watched me before, are going to go, oh my God, she just talks about everything. Well, I've been doing this for years, and a lot of my viewers ask about my family. And... Um, I don't want anybody to feel they're alone out there that tragedy happens to everybody. We're not exempt. doesn't matter who we are. It happens. And the older you get, the more it happens. I'm at that age now where somebody I know, a friend or acquaintance or whatever, pretty much every day, um, somebody is passed not a very good perk for getting older. I just had a uh, Humana was here yesterday to do their annual check on us to make sure we're following our doctor's instructions and whatever we're supposed to be doing on our annual checkups and vaccines and things like that. And the good news was is uh, the woman that was here, she'd been a physician for 20 years and then decided to do this. Why? I don't know. But um, said that whatever it is I'm doing, keep on doing it. I thank God um, have been able to maintain very good health and very pleased with it. But a lot of that comes from a lot of our good health comes from good exercise and. I finally did talk my husband into it last night because he, she told him he really needed to exercise even two days a week and get his heart rate up. So I talked to him last night at length and he agreed that he would give it a shot. I said, two days a week. I work out seven days a week. You can do two. Um, he doesn't have to work out the way that I do. You know, I go to the club and I work out here and um, he doesn't have to do that, but working out, boards off, she was telling me yesterday, you have a lower risk of cancer, heart, um, heart, cholesterol, um, dementia. She was telling me all of the things, the chances of you getting it, a person who stays physically active and working out, which included getting the heart rate up, uh, have less of a chance of de developing any of uh, those things. And that in itself is enough for me to keep it up. It isn't necessarily because I love it, because there's times that I don't want to do it. And that's what I told my husband. I said, I don't always get up and go, oh, yippee, I get to go work out. When I have to go to my, my, weight, my weight training class, I'm always wanting to Lately, not all that I hadn't in the beginning, but now I'm like, oh, I don't want to go. But I make myself go, and when I'm done, I feel so much better. So I would encourage anybody out there getting older, follow those. What they tell you to do with that, they're not lying. They are, it's absolutely, absolutely, it's it's good for when you get older to prevent falling down, break, breaking a hip, breaking a leg, breaking a, a back, which was a happened to my sister-in-law's mother she broke her back never recovered from it and passed away um just know that that will extend your quality of life and length my father's going to be 96 pretty soon He's my role model. I want to, I want to reach a hundred, providing, providing this world doesn't go down the toilet before then. 
I had so much garbage going on. Okay, guys, I didn't end up doing the face on number two. Now, say a little prayer that when I go to put the front and the back together, that they go. I will film doing doing that. I'll wait till these are dry. I'll work on some other ones, and then I'll film putting the two big ones together. I'll figure out a way. I, I don't have a table wide enough, but I will figure something out um, so that I can show you. These are not ones that I would encourage anybody who is doing this and selling them that's shipping. I would not. Like I said, that one box that was just two foot pieces was $55. These are four feet. Number one, the boxes are going to be outrageous. The packing materials, the uh, materials that go into making it, the shipping costs, everything. And in order to make it worth your while to do, you're going to have to charge an arm and a leg for these because they you have to cut them up into pieces and put them together so that you can't tell they were cut in pieces. Then you spend time decorating and embellishing them, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, that's going to be it. <laughs> don't drop, don't drop, please, Ellie, don't drop. That, oh, see, this table's too narrow. I have got, I've got to figure something out. But that is going to be it for today, and I hope that this was still recording. I am so out of touch, guys, but thank you for watching. And again, when I am all done, I will post all the pictures at the trailer of the video, if I can find it on my watch. There it is. Thank you, and everybody have a fantastic week. It's Sunday, so Monday, first day of the week. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.